Hey guys and welcome to Hara Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be talking about Helicobacter pylori, which is more commonly known as H. pylori. So let's get started. So what is Helicobacter pylori? Helicobacter pylori is a type of bacteria that causes chronic infection and inflammation of the stomach and the duodenum. The bacteria are spiral shaped and have flagella which facilitate its penetration and attachment into the mucosa of the stomach and the duodenum. Helicobacter pylori is commonly known as the number one cause worldwide for gastritis and ulcer development. In 65% of patients who test positive for an H. pylori infection, we can also find CAG-A. CAG-A or cytotoxin associated gene is associated with even more severe gastritis, gastric ulcers, gastric cancer and lymphoma development. So you can see this is a picture on the right. We have the stomach and the innermost layer of the stomach is called the mucosa. That's the first lining. And this is a microscopic image of what the bacteria look like. And you can see this is their tails or their flagella which facilitate their attachment into the stomach lining. And that is why these bacteria are so dangerous because they're able to penetrate into the mucosa and attach themselves there. So what makes Helicobacter pylori unique? Helicobacter pylori bacteria are unique because they are able to produce an enzyme called urease, which allows them to live in the harsh environment of the stomach, which as we know has a pH of 1.5 to 3.5. So it's a highly acidic environment. The urease enzyme produced by the bacteria have the ability to convert urea to ammonia, which is an alkaline substance which neutralizes enough of the stomach's acid to allow them to survive. So if you look closely at the diagram below, we can see the H. pylori bacteria, and they have this ability to produce urease. And urease is an enzyme which, when in contact with urea, so you see the urea enters the bacteria, and when urea enters the bacteria, they're able to catalyze a reaction which causes them to produce ammonia. And when that ammonia is produced, because ammonia is a very alkaline substance, so we have acids and we have bases or alkalines, and because we have an alkaline substance produced by this reaction, essentially we have sort of like a wall of alkaline around the bacteria, which prevents that acidic environment which is shown here in red, from harming the bacteria and killing them. So this is a very clever mechanism that Helicobacter pylori are able to achieve. And because of this, they are able to survive in the stomach's harsh environment and able to multiply and cause even greater damage. So is the infection contagious? Helicobacter pylori has been proven to be contagious and is passed from person to person by saliva, fecal contamination, which can be in food or water, and from practicing poor hygiene. Symptoms of Helicobacter pylori infection. Most people with the infection don't experience any symptoms. When the chronic infection leads to an inflammation of the stomach lining, which is known as gastritis, or erosions in the wall of the stomach, which is ulcers, symptoms will then appear. These symptoms include severe pain in the mid to upper abdomen, usually between meals or at night, bloating, heartburn, nausea or vomiting, dark or black stool, which is called melena, or the vomiting of blood, which is hematemesis, weight loss, and belching. So how is Helicobacter pylori diagnosed? There are several methods we could use to test for an H. pylori infection. The first method is the breath test, which is also known as the carbon isotope urea breath test. In this test, the patient swallows a capsule containing urea made from an isotope of carbon. If H. pylori is present in the stomach, the urea is broken down and converted to carbon dioxide. This is then absorbed across the lining of the stomach and into the blood and then travels into the lungs where it is excreted. Samples of exhaled breath are then collected about 10 minutes after and the isotopic carbon in the exhaled carbon dioxide is measured. So on the diagram on the right, you can see the urea 
capsule being swallowed by the patient and when it hits the stomach the urea is broken down as we said earlier it'll give us ammonia which ensures the h pylori survival in the stomach because it creates that alkaline environment for the bacteria to survive but it also gives us carbon dioxide and this increasing amount of carbon dioxide is then absorbed by the blood and excreted through the respiratory tract and following this we can measure the isotopic carbon in the exhaled carbon dioxide another test we can use is the blood test and here we can measure the antibodies to h pylori however this test can only tell us if the body has antibodies against the h pylori bacteria but cannot tell if the patient has a current infection or for how long. Continuing with testing methods for the H. pylori, we could do a stool antigen test. And in this test, we need a sample of the patient's stool. And this can help us detect traces of H. pylori bacteria in feces. And the final test we could use is a biopsy during endoscopy. And in this procedure, a tissue sample can be taken from the stomach lining to test for the infection with H. pylori. And this is actually the most reliable way because it's a direct sampling of the stomach mucosa. So how is Helicobacter pylori treated? We usually administer triple therapies, which last 10 to 14 days. And there are three treatment regimens which we could choose from. The first one is omeprazole, amoxicillin, and clarithromycin for 10 days. Bismuth subsalicylate, metronidazole and tetracycline which is given for 14 days or lanceprazole, amoxicillin and clarithromycin which is approved for either 10 days or for 14 days and these are the different treatment options available for the eradication of the H. pylori infection. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found the presentation very informative. Please do like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.